SwimOutlet.com delivers the best online shopping experience. With an extensive selection and the lowest prices, you're guaranteed to find the product you need. Here's what you get. Free shipping on all orders over $49. Free one to two day shipping on all orders over $99. All orders placed by 6 p.m. ship out the same day. Shop at SwimOutlet.com, the web's most popular swim shop. This is the Morning Swim Show for Thursday, September 13th, 2012. I'm Jeff Cummings. Last week in Northern California, I attended the RCP Tiburon Sprint Classic, a special event founded by Bob Playsack and held in the backyard of swimming philanthropist Todd Speaker. Josh Schneider walked away with more than $10,000 in winnings, not bad for about two hours of work. And Roddy Gaines took on Ariana Vanderpool Wallace in a special Battle of the Sexes 50 freestyle race. On today's show, we want to bring you highlights and interviews from the Sprint Classic, including a special interview with Matt Biondi and Tom Jager, who raced each other for the first time in 20 years. All right, so the last time Matt Biondi and Tom Jager raced, I believe, was the 1992 Olympics, 50 meter free. Matt, you won silver. Tom, you won bronze. Did it all come rushing back to you guys? No, but I think, uh, you know, it's neat, right? It's neat to be... I guess acknowledge, you know, I mean, it's, we all have ego, so it's nice for people to clap for us again, so that's cool. Matt, you, you probably haven't swum much since then. What's it, what's it feel like to be uh, moving those arms and legs through the water again? Well, I still enjoy swimming. Um, just don't enjoy racing so much anymore. Um, being in the water is a really important part of my um, mental health, physical health, and I still swim on a regular basis every couple of days, a week anyway. Um, but racing, I, I could do without this. We decided to do it one time for charity. and. <laughs> Good chance to see my buddy Tom and some other good friends, so um, I don't expect to make it <laughs> again for another 20 years. Well, you know, I, I know that a, a big, really big key of, you know, you two has been that rivalry that you guys had. Now we've got that kind of going with the Phelps and Lochte kind of thing. You know, does it kind of, you know, make you guys, you know, every time you see those two match up, you, you ever think, gosh, it was that heavy for us? Yeah, I, you know, I think it's great to be able, for me, you know, it takes a while to go through that, and as you get older and more mature, and, you know, it's great for me to look back and go, yeah, I, I lived that, I experienced that, and uh, so now it's, you know, maybe I'm on the other side, I'm on the downhill side, so I think back with fond memories, and I'm very blessed and very, uh, you know, proud to be a part of this. This is, you know, to be able to, to be, you know, in those days when Matt and I, we were changing the world of swimming, and we knew it, and uh, we had fun doing it, and we did it the right way. All right, so I've got the Bobby Riggs and Billie Jean King of swimming here. I'm here in Vanderpool Wallace and Roddy Gaines. Roddy, you won 21.98. Were you nervous about racing up against uh, someone who just swam the Olympic final of the 50? I was. In fact, you know, coming in, I knew all the women were going to be really good. But you got to have a little bit of that momentum coming off that final of the Olympic 50, a little bit of that competitive edge still in you. Oh, definitely, yeah. I really wanted to win that, but I knew Rowdy was going to be fast coming in, and I was going to have to swim a best time almost to beat him and 21.9 is nothing to be sad about so yeah no matter what age right, right. it's got to be pretty exciting <laughs> well it's great to see you both in the pool racing it's been a fun fun watching that thanks a lot guys thank thanks, you buddy. thank you all right i'm here with the winner of the ten thousand dollar sprint classic defending your title josh schneider yes, sir. Uh, obviously like most swimmers in the united states you're a struggling professional swimmer so i'm sure that money's going to come in handy oh that money comes in handy big time uh but like money ain't everything. I've 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 learned that, and I really think that um, you know hurt me ultimately um, this year and last year. Just got too consumed with it and lost sight of what was truly important, and that's winning races and having fun. Yeah, yeah. So obviously, I would imagine you're. But you're, I love money. You, yeah, everybody loves money. So I would imagine you're going to be coming, uh, focusing on this next season, um, a little bit different than you you had this year. Yeah, I mean, I'm I, I'm a little better. I have a chip on my shoulder. I'm ready to get in the weight room. I want to get stronger. Uh, I want to be, I don't know, a little bit heavier, but I, I want to be at like 225. And uh, I just want to build as much strength as I can because I feel like that really transitions well for speed for me. I'm here with the namesake and the founder of not just the RCP Tiburon Sprint Classic, but the famous RCP Tiburon Mile, Bob Playsack. Bob, this was the second year of the Sprint Classic. Uh, how is it better improved from 2010? I think it's better improved because you had three different sets or waves of athletes competing. You had not only the guys, top eight guys in the world, you had the battle of sexes with Rowdy, and then you had the, the legends with Jagger, I think Jagger and Bionni. So I think there was something for everyone there. 
when did you start thinking that you wanted to get people like Biondi and Jager involved? Well, you know, I, I actually talked to Carolyn Joyce about two years ago, and she came up to me and said, hey, Bob, you've got all these men racing. What about the women? And I, I started thinking about it. I said, listen, hold that thought. Let me see if I can put that together. And then I saw Rowdy. I thought, well, what about a battle of the sexes thing? If Rowdy would be interested, that would be interesting. And when Rowdy said yes, he says, look, whatever you do, Bob, whoever you get, I'm up for it. And then Carolyn said, I'm into it. And then I thought, let's get a few more gals. So those steps came together. And then I thought, boy, you know, I've got the young blood in here. I've got a little bit of uh, uh, history here with Rowdy Gaines. Let's talk to Biondi and Jagger. And I'd had some conversations with, with uh, Tom Jagger on the phone. And I kind of floated the question. He says, we'll see what Matt thinks. If Matt's up for it, I'm up for it. And so we went back and forth a little bit. And it kind of played out from there. Very nice. So this all started two years ago. So if you got any ideas about what you're going to do for the next one to improve on it? Well, I'll tell you, I think we're going to kind of let this one settle in a little bit. I'm really pleased the way that this improved over the last one we put together. The, the first event was in 2010. And what I really liked about this, the weather was spectacular today. We had just a nice crew of people working together. I think we improved in a lot of different ways here. The pool was beautiful. The setting was gorgeous. So I'm looking for uh, new ideas, ways to make it interesting and to really create something special in boutique swimming. Yeah. And you know, the Tiburon Mile has been kind of a, a well-known event for open water swimmers to come and race and win a little bit of money. And now you're yeah. getting it into involved in the pool. How can swimming in the United States, because it's kind of popular in Europe. How can swimmers, swimming, USA Swimming maybe in particular, kind of grow and involve something like this to keep professional swimmers motivated and involved? I, I think the creativity that comes out is by talking to the athletes themselves and trying to get some ideas. I mean, I took uh, the next step from an idea that actually already been created about 25 years ago when Biondi and Jagger used to race against each other. So I just took that to a different level and I think that's kind of the way things are in business and in life. Someone comes up with a good idea and someone says I think I can approve upon that and so on and so on. So I, I'm, I'm pleased that they created that idea to begin with and I'm just happy to take it to the next level and I'm hoping someone else will step out there and say I've got a better idea as well and I'd be willing to help them in any way they can do that. Yeah, I'm sure they're going to be giving you a call pretty soon, Bob. Thanks so much for uh, another great year with the Sprint Classic, and we look forward to seeing how the milers uh, do tomorrow. Thank you, Jeff. It was a pleasure. Thank you for being here in Swimming World. You guys are just, uh, you guys are the best. Thank you. Our pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so I'm here with the host of this event, Todd Speaker, who had this event in his backyard here, a two-lane, 25-yard pool. Todd, first of all, thanks for having the event here. Now, when did Bob come to you and say, we'd like to host the, some of the fastest swimmers in the world in your pool? Bob and I go back a long way. We're both members of the Olympic Club as, as master swimmers, and uh, we just discussed it. It was, it was a joint effort, really. but. Bob did all the work and deserves the credit. I provided, uh, my wife and I provided the venue, and uh, uh, I just thought it'd be kind of a kick in the seat of the pants. Yeah, and what was it like to, to know that, you know, the pool where you swim every morning to do a workout hosted some of the fastest swimmers in the world? I could not believe before my very eyes that I would see four different swimmers go under 19 seconds, uh, under 20 seconds, excuse me, and the ladies, 22 low. This is a backyard junkyard pool. <laughs> Not too junkyard, Todd. I mean, it looks pretty good. I think the everybody was okay with nobody had any complaints. Uh, but you know, I equate a backyard pool to home movies. They always screw up, and this went without a hitch. We did forget the whistle, or somebody did, <laughs> and it reminded me of the 1892 big game when Herbert Hoover, a subsequent president, forgot to bring the football for the game. So they had to go back over to Berkeley and get the football to play, play it in San Francisco. Well, I think we did okay without the whistle. Nobody was really complaining. No, they, they, they got it. They, they, they winged it pretty nicely. So, you know, this a very beautiful home, and, and we're going to show people some, some footage of it. You know, what is it? Obviously, you and your wife do very well. What does it feel for you to be able to give back to the sport in the ways that you have? I'm paying back. You must pay debts. People lent me the time. Uh, to get me into, get me good education, taught me about life, and I'm just giving back. That's all. And uh, I, I still owe them more than they owe me. Well, I think you, I think your debts are being pretty well paid, Todd. No, I tell you, no, but it's, it's people, it, it's a great sport. It, uh, compared to football and uh, basketball and baseball, they don't get the notoriety because uh, you can't get 50000 a game. Uh, but um, it's it's been it's 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 made me what I am today, the sport of swimming. Well, swimming thanks you. Everybody here today thanks you, and I thank you for joining us today. And that's uh, what a great uh, philanthropist of the sport, Todd Speaker. Jeff, thank you very much.
We have all the races and many more interviews for you to watch on SwimmingWorld.tv. Just click on the Events tab and select the RCP Sprint Classic logo. That's going to do it for today's show. We'll be back tomorrow with another interview from the Ask a World Clinic featuring Olympian Andrew Lauderstein. I'm Jeff Cummings. Thanks for watching.